Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is quick exhaust valves. Our objective is to introduce an extremely handy pneumatic device known as a quick exhaust valve. We'll discuss how quick exhaust valves function, perform a quick demo, and call it a day. A quick exhaust valve is a pneumatic device that increases the exhaust capacity of pneumatic actuators. Quick exhaust valves are often found in pneumatic actuators in fast-paced production environments, which necessitate minimal idle time between workpieces. For example, some operation may necessitate the precise, accurate extension of a cylinder with a specified extension speed and force. However, when that particular operation is over, all the rod needs to do is get the hell out of the way before another workpiece is slammed in place. Given the control of actuator speed is a bit of a challenge in pneumatic circuits characterized by a compressible fluid, all that line and junk in the way controlling extension speed sometimes interferes with the traction. A quick exhaust valve essentially acts as a shortcut to the exhaust bypassing what might otherwise be a convoluted route if the shortcut didn't exist. Quick exhaust valves are three port devices that look astoundingly similar to a logical OR valve, the notable exception being a pilot passage and then a silencer on exhaust port 3. The silencer isn't always illustrated in the schematic symbol. If it is, it'll be on the pilot passage side. As you might gather from the schematic, a quick exhaust valve works like this. If port 1 is pressurized, it pushes the check valve poppet in actuality, it's a sealing disc to cover exhaust port 3. The pressurized air flows from 1 to 2. If, however, port 1 is no longer pressurized, port 2 pushes the check valve poppet to cover port 1, and port 2 exits exhaust port 3 at the point of use. Let's demonstrate the advantages of quick exhaust valves by comparing and contrasting a system lacking a quick exhaust valve with one that includes a quick exhaust valve. Consider this pneumatically extended spring retracted single acting cylinder with a flow control valve with check valve bypass installed in a relatively long line between it and the directional control valve controlling it. This system does not include a quick exhaust valve. As a result, you might expect it to not meet our expectations. Those expectations being precise controlled extension speed and super rapid retraction. Judging from the orientation of flow control valve with check valve bypass, this is a meter in extension flow control arrangement. When solenoid A is energized, the directional control valve shifts such that pressurized flow forces the check valve poppet to the seat and all flow must travel through the narrow restriction of the flow control valve. A technician can regulate extension speed to the desired specification by adjusting the restriction of the flow control valve. In a perfect world, when the solenoid is de-energized, the directional control valve returns to the normally closed position, the actor retraction would push the check valve poppet off its seat and allow unrestricted flow to exhaust port 3 in the directional control valve. In the real world, all that narrow line between the cylinder and the directional control valve exhaust adds friction and resistance to the exhausting air, thus unintentionally retarding retraction speed. This begs the question, why are you wasting time and effort by porting exhaust air all the way back to the directional control valve exhaust? Can't you just dump the exhaust air at the point of use? After all, it's air, and pneumatic systems have no need for a return reservoir as do hydraulics. Air, at least at the time of this recording, is cheap and plentiful, you can always get more. To speed up retraction, consider essentially the exact same system, only this time including a quick exhaust valve on the cap end of the single acting cylinder oriented the following fashion. As previously, when solenoid A is energized, the directional control valve shifts such that pressurized flow forces the poppet of the check valve to the seat and all flow must travel through the narrow restriction of the flow control valve. Port 1 of the quick exhaust valve is pressurized, thus the sealing disc covers exhaust port 3 and flow travels unimpeded from 1 to 2. The cylinder extends with the requisite speed. In contrast to the earlier implementation, when the solenoid is de-energized to retract the cylinder, port 1 of the quick exhaust valve is depressurized and the exhausting air entering port 2 pushes the check valve poppet to cover port 1 and exhausting air, instead of battling its way through a long, long line back to the directional control valve, instead exits exhaust port 3 at the point of use. The cylinder cap end's contents are blasted into space without any delay, and the rod retracts with alarming speed, ready for another controlled extension. Here's a simulation of the two circuits side by side. When solenoid A is energized, both cylinders extend with the desired speed. When solenoid A is de-energized, the one lacking the quick exhaust valve is notably slower and shows the exhaust air still in the line fighting its way back to the exhaust and the directional control valve. The one including the quick exhaust valve is already retracted and waiting for the next workpiece. 
Here's a real world implementation of the two circuits, one lacking a quick exhaust valve exhibiting controlled extension and somewhat delayed retraction. The other, including a quick exhaust valve, exhibiting controlled extension and super rapid retraction. Pretty cool, eh? Properly installed quick exhaust valves don't impede the circuit in any manner in one direction. However, when it's time to exhaust, they drop open a trap door and kick everything out at once. Key to the veracity of the previous statement is this. Properly installed quick exhaust valves don't impede the cylinder on extension and hasten retraction. I've yet to actually run a lab where someone doesn't install a quick exhaust valve backwards. An incorrectly installed quick exhaust valve emits an instantly recognizable train whistle sound. Don't let your lab station sound like this. All right, that's it for this quick introduction to quick exhaust valves. We'll be making use of them in later pneumatic circuits. In conclusion, this lecture introduced the quick exhaust valve. We learned properly installed quick exhaust valves accelerate the return stroke of a cylinder by exhausting air at the point of use. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.